Hi, I'm Stephanie Vecchio of the Middle Country Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 27 in our History Bites series. Today we will discuss Grace Hopper, who was one of the first three modern computer programmers and made significant impacts on the development of computer languages. The daughter of Walter Fletcher Murray and Mary Campbell Van Horn, Grace Brewster Murray, later Hopper, was born in 1906 in New York City. Her father owned an insurance company and she grew up attending private schools. Hopper happened to grow up at a time of unusual opportunity for women. A surprising number of women were receiving doctorates in the 1920s and 1930s, numbers that would not be matched again until the 1980s. In 1928, Hopper graduated from Vassar College with degrees in mathematics and physics and received her master's degree in mathematics from Yale in 1930. In 1931, she began teaching math at Vassar while pursuing her doctorate at Yale under computer pioneer Howard Engstrom. In 1934, Hopper completed her PhD in mathematics and mathematical physics from Yale. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor and the United States entry into World War II, Hopper wanted to join in on the war effort, but was initially rejected because of her small stature and age. Nevertheless, she persisted and joined the U.S. Naval Reserve in 1943. She took a one-year sabbatical from her professorship at Vassar and was assigned to the Bureau of Ships Computation Project at Harvard University. At Harvard, Hopper worked with Howard Aiken, another computer pioneer. Aiken had developed the IBM Automatic Sequence Controlled Calculator, better known as the Mark I one of the first large-scale automatic calculators and a precursor of electronic computers. Hopper was responsible for programming the Mark I and punching machine instructions onto tape. She also wrote the 561-page user manual for the Mark I, called A Manual of Operation for the Automatic Sequence Controlled Calculator. This manual is considered the first comprehensive document explaining how to program a computer. It was here where Hopper coined the term bug and debug to refer to a computer program after a moth had entered the Mark I, forcing the programmers to take apart the entire machine. These terms are still used regularly today. Hopper's time in the Navy shaped her career path. Hopper and her fellow officers in the Harvard lab worked on top-secret calculations essential to the war effort, computing rocket trajectories, creating range tables for new anti-aircraft guns, and calibrating minesweepers. In addition to their work for the Navy, Hopper and her colleagues also completed calculations for the Army and ran numbers used by John von Neumann in developing the plutonium bomb dropped on Nagasaki, Japan. After the war had ended, Hopper turned down a full professorship at Vassar in order to remain at Harvard, becoming a research fellow in engineering sciences and applied physics. During this time, she helped develop the Mark II and Mark III computers as Harvard continued to receive funding contracts from the Navy. In 1946, Hopper left active service when the Navy turned down her request for a regular commission because of her age. She also left Harvard when it became clear she would not be promoted or granted tenure. In 1949, she joined the Eckert Mochley Computer Corporation in Philadelphia as a senior mathematician. The company had developed the first electronic computer under Army contracts. When the firm was taken over by Remington Rand, Hopper remained and undertook some of her most influential work. As head programmer for Remington Rand, she worked on the UNIVAC-1, also called the Universal Automatic Computer. In 1952, Hopper's programming team developed the first computer language compiler, called A-0. Compilers translated mathematical code into machine-readable binary code, and they would eventually make it possible to write programs for multiple computers rather than a single machine. Next, her team developed Flowmatic, the first programming language to use English-like commands. 
Hopper continued to make strides in computer programming and languages, advocating for word-based computer languages, particularly business-oriented languages, which are still in use today. While working in the private sector, Hopper remained part of the Navy Reserves, but was forced to retire with the rank of commander in 1966 due to age restrictions. Hopper called it the saddest day of her life. However, several months later, the Navy recalled her to active service as her help was needed to standardize the Navy's multiple computer languages. Nicknamed Amazing Grace by her subordinates, Hopper remained on active duty for 19 years. She was promoted to the title of Commodore in 1983 after a bill was introduced by an Illinois congressman, and then promoted to Rear Admiral in 1985. At the age of 79, she was the oldest officer on active U.S. naval duty when she retired again in 1986. Hopper was a main figure and representative for the Navy's computer programs and technologies, and Hopper's legacy in the Navy continued when, in 1996, they commissioned the USS Hopper, a guided missile destroyer. While she remained on active naval duty, Hopper continued her work in the private sector while also working as an adjunct lecturer at multiple institutions, and she was a strong public advocate for computer and technology education. In 1972, she retired from Sperry Rand, where she worked in the UNIVAC division. After officially retiring from the Navy in 1986, she went to work as a senior consultant in public relations at the Digital Equipment Corporation where she worked until 1991. As a professor, Hopper lectured at Moore School of Electrical Engineering at the University of Pennsylvania. From 1971 to 1978, she served as a lecturer in Management Sciences at George Washington University. In addition to teaching, Hopper organized many workshops and conferences to advocate for and promote understanding of programming and expand the community of computer programmers. Throughout her time at Eckert Moshley and its successor companies, she also continued to teach various seminars. Hopper once said, If you ask me what accomplishment I'm most proud of, the answer would be all the young people I've trained over the years. That's more important than writing the first compiler. Hopper felt strongly that it was her and other programmers' responsibility to share their knowledge so that their field might grow. Hopper also advocated for the advancement of technology outside of just her field. She helped to persuade businesses and even the general public to adopt and work with new technologies and computers, and made sure to write clear instructions on how to use technological equipment so that almost anyone could understand. She was passionate about technology, and often said that she wished she could live until 2000 to see what kind of advances were made, and even laugh at anyone who didn't believe in the power and progress of technology. Hopper was well recognized by certain groups for her continuously groundbreaking work. She was elected a fellow of the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers in 1962, and was named the first computer science man of the year by the Data Processing Management Association in 1969. She was also awarded the National Medal of Technology in 1991 by then President George Bush. And she was the recipient of more than 40 honorary degrees and many scholarships, professorships, awards, and conferences are named in her honor. In 1972, she received Yale's Wilbur Lucius Cross Medal, which recognizes distinguished achievements in scholarship, teaching, academic administration, and public service. In 2016, Hopper posthumously received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Barack Obama, the nation's highest civilian honor, in recognition of her remarkable contributions to the field of computer science. Ultimately, Hopper was an incredibly accomplished, intelligent, and passionate woman. She gained wide recognition in fields often dominated by men, and holds a great legacy. 
Little is known about her private life, other than that she went through a divorce in 1945 and never had children. As far as anyone knows, she never remarried. What we do know is that Hopper changed the course of history with her work and helped make the technology we use today possible. Without her and the work she did, we can only imagine where we might be. I'd like to thank you all for joining us for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, click like, and if you watched on YouTube, click subscribe. Thank you so much, and we'll see you all next time.